Hey there! You might have noticed that I'm covered in pink stuff. And I'm not alone. The shop is covered in pink dust and chunks and bits. And I want to tell you why. The reason is because we made this. This is a mold for a powder surfer, which is a style of snowboard that does not have bindings and it just relies on gravity and the shape of the deck to keep you in place. It's meant to be written in deep, fresh snow. And we're building one because I'm going to visit my brother in Colorado and I want to make us a new toy to play with. So I'm going to walk you through the process. And before I do that, I just want to outline some of the decisions that we made and why we made them. The mold is made from insulation foam. It's a denser one. And if you're in the shop, you can look at the R value of the foam that you're buying. I don't have a piece of the foam here that has the R value on it. But you want to find something with an R of 9 or higher. This one was 10. It means it's nice and dense, which is important because the way that we're going to be pressing the board when we press it is with a vacuum bag, which just relies on atmospheric pressure. You couldn't put a mold like this into a physical press that has clamping forces above that. But for a vacuum bag, this is going to work just great. We're going to cut the profile of the board tip to tail using a hot wire cutter that we made in another video. We had to modify it a little bit because we had some trouble, but it ended up doing the job. After we use the hot wire cutter to cut the profile from nose to tail, we're going to use some normal carving tools to give the base of the board a little bit extra profile. That's how we're going to get our concave, that's how we're going to get our rails, that's how we're going to get a little bit of a scoop and a nose. I'm going to show you how we did that. And then when that's all done, I'm going to paint some plaster of Paris over the whole thing, fill in some of these gaps that we got. Um, and then we'll be ready to press the board. The board's going to be made of 8th inch ply, Baltic birch plywood, um, fiberglass, we got some umpy, some ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, also goes by Ptex, which is a brand name for snowboard base material. Maybe a veneer top sheet, I haven't done my materials buying for that yet, but we're trying to make this pretty legit, so we need a pretty legit mold. I'm going to take you guys back in time and show you how I got started. And when all of that is done, I'm going to go do the plaster part right now. So, I'll see you soon. Hey, I'm working on the uh, the template for the powder surface. Got a piece of wood. I made a note to myself. This is, this is the piece of wood. The other one that I got has a big old bend in it. And it's just, I need that straight edge on at least one side in order to do this well. So, I'm going to mark um, two lines on it, the height of the two blocks of foam that I have, which is going to help me figure out where the top layer needs to go, top block of foam, because um, it doesn't go the whole length. I've got a two inch block and then a one inch block. Like I said, we need a line of two inches and we need a line of three inches. start from a center line instead of from an end, and that way if I've got some extra room I can expand. Directional. The board is going to be directional. So 
this was the other board that I bought. of seven feet, eight feet, it looks like um, it loses about half an inch. Very simple. So I'm actually just going to trace this curve right into the flat, the flat section here. So it, it'll functionally be flat. Well, I mean, it'll behave like a flat section, but it'll have a nice little tiny little bit of rock. for a 52 inch board and I realized I got my numbers mixed up I want at least like a 56 um, and I still have a 60 inch mold so I think what I'm gonna do is just extend the flat or sorry extend the nose and the tail the extra four inches out and then I can make whatever width within that that will let me play with different tail shapes Same thing I did with my original design, um, just in a different color, I'm going through, going over the line, and a bright color because otherwise we get lost in the mess that is all of my working lines. start working the phone.
space. Plenty. Plenty of room to play. Great. Alright, then what I'm gonna do, um, I read this on a, like a model making forum, but like a, I think it was like train models or something, or landscape models, that you can glue foam up with PVA. So I'm just gonna use some wood glue. And pins. You can use pins to keep it in place. And then I'll just weigh it down with whatever you have around. So I'm gonna do that. dry for actually probably a couple days and finish up that hot wire cutter and then the idea is going to be we put the mold templates on both sides and just run the hot wire right over it. Just going to cut off all the parts we want and we'll have the flat shape that then we can work all of our nice details into. So see you in a couple days. This is a mold for a powder surfer, which is a style of snowboard that does not use bindings. It relies just on the gravity of the situation, which is like, it's pretty grave because we can't say sentences, right? <laughs> Just don't want to open for me today. It's not great.